Nigerian women thronged the National Assembly in their numbers to express their disdain on the rejection of women-related bills. Does this undermine the importance and relevance of women's contribution to the governance in Nigeria? We we'll seek answers. Barely five days after assenting to the Electoral Act 2022, President Mohamed Buhari has written to the Senate to amend the newly signed Act. is demanding voting rights for political appointees. We will be taking a look at this and the impact on the country. And we will review the stories on the front pages of major dailies across the country. Uh, welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. And I am Messi Boko. It's good to be back on your screen uh, this beautiful Thursday morning. Yes, it is first day morning. And Mercy, when I think of first day, I'm just reminded that the <laughs> weekend is close by. You don't know how it is in Lagos when you work from Monday till Thursday. I wish we were staying in Kandu. You know, they have like just four work days in the weekend. Their weekend starts from Friday, you know, as, as so, opposed so, to Saturday and so Sunday. So should we interpret that to mean that um, you probably don't enjoy working? Mercy, how are you doing today? <laughs> Don't put me on the spot this morning. You're not going to intimidate me. But Mr. whole lot is really happening in Nigeria. You know, we'll be looking at the women who protested yesterday. But one thing I found uh, really alarming was uh, a video that trended uh, on social media yesterday. And Mercy, lo and behold, we found um, some other ladies, you know, carrying tray for VIPs. They're practically becoming When is it odd you, you, you need to say the word, a police officer? Okay, fine. Dressed in his, <laughs> his yeah. attire. Mm -hmm. But I think yes. that this is something that's been ongoing for a very long time. Mm. And it's just the fact that, you know, maybe at this point in time, we're very camera conscious and you have smartphones. Uh, not every smartphone is, our so smartphone smart. user is acting very smart, <laughs> yeah. but you have a lot of smartphones out there and mm. you just have all of this because this has actually been going on for a very long time. It's really very, saddening. Very. The big question would be, because right now uh, the, head, the headlines would be saying that the Nigerian police are fuming as regards, you know, the police officer that was, uh, you know, acting like an errand boy. Mm. He was actually an errand boy, uh, you know, wait, to wait, yeah. the political appointee. So, but like I mentioned earlier, and it's nothing new. It's something that's been ongoing, but, but fortunately or unfortunately, how you want to put it, it's just that we're in an era where there's a lot of smartphone mm. that's been put out. And so we want to take, you know, Basically, make memories of everything. very full. Yes, we want, we want to make memories of everything that's yeah. going on. I mean, you can see him properly wow. dressed in his attire. Well, this is not what the Nigerian police force is meant to do, but that's what has constantly happened for us it in Nigeria. Been for a very long time. And uh, you, you constantly would want to agree with me that you have the elites. The elite have, over the years, dominated um, the space of... I mean, if you want to talk about the police force now, you have uh, these men, apart from, you know, carrying the plates now, they do carry the handbags, uh, they do wash clothes, they run errands, they have they now clothes. be, you know, yeah. they now do Part chores. Like domestic stuff Domesticated, the you know, or domestic activities is what, you know, police officers. Now, let's even look at why you would want to hire or you want to even have a police yeah. attached to you. I mean, in that, in that situation, and if there's any confusion, if there's any attack, what we're expected to see is him holding a gun. Mm. Even though there's been a lot of argument over time that uh, there should be a withdrawal, uh, we need to withdraw, you know, you know the police. Yes, because um, if you want to look at the number as at uh, last year, July, uh, you have the United Nations putting out statistics, Niger 211. Mm. So we're looking at 211 people. Yeah. And then if you look at the police force, number is 371,800 police officers as at, you know, the same statistics that we still have up until we have the police updating the data and letting us know that we have. But right now we constantly see that we have 371,800 police officers policing a population of 211 people. And then because if you remember vividly, there was also a call that we withdraw police officers from this elite. Because out of the 371, you don't leave it at 300 and 
300 or you want to say 400 approximately, you have 100,000 of these police officers policing individuals. And now they're not just policing, but they have been turned to Aaron. So at this point, in, let's even look at it. I think that the person in question, I mean, the lady, the appointee, does not even have regard for the Nigerian police. And that's, that's, what the, the, that's what the elite in Nigeria have constantly done. They do not respect the police. They don't respect the police force. And that's why you would even ask or you would demand. And even if the police officer want to carry a plate for you, you should decline. Mm -hmm. You should decline. There's no respect for the uniform. There's no respect for anything. And that's, and that's what's going on. Because they're actually representatives of the country. They're actually representing Nigeria. No, but if you look at, if you look at the primary function of the police as mm. they were created, they are supposed to maintain peace and security no, no, and no, no, protection no, no. of life. Mm. And that's... So let's even agree that it's okay to have you have... I mean, it's all right that you have a police officer because yeah, that's another one. Mm. I mean, we're talking about 211 people in Nigeria. So and then we have decided the to allocate mm. uh, 100 police officers out of the 300 and something that we have, you know, yeah, to some individuals. Mm. Now, out of that now, then he's supposed to protect you. Is he supposed to carry plates around? For me, it's just the, it's how, you know, the elite in Nigeria, and that's the truth. The it's elite in how, Nigeria mm. do not respect the police. They have constantly damaged the police force. They have contributed to all of that. Some yeah. people have actually said that, oh, if you look at it, you, the young man does not want to, you know, miss out on the little stipends he will be getting how and much, all of that. It doesn't necessarily it matter. You remember vividly now that the presidency or the federal government is saying we're going to have an increment for police officers, 20%. Yeah. How honest have we been? How, what is the level of implementation following that to the letter Imagine and so sometimes if you find out i mean as much as we want to say that that's not an excuse for police officers to act differently but we have not respected that fear no i want to say pigeon now because it's not really not no, no, I, I know how i know how i know how you know really you know very saddening this particular scenario is because like you have said it is just a disrespect to the constituted authority in the country in a country like ours when we have uh, you know issues of security bedeviling us you know the northwestern part the northeastern part the issues of banditry insurgency on the rise every other day nigerians are not secure and then you know the bulk of our policemen are attached to vips who actually don't really need their service. If you really need uh, extra service for protection, you could hire private security guards. You could actually, they are, in Lagos, there are so many of them, even there's uh, the neighborhood security watch. You could actually explore uh, local uh, vigilantes or whatever. But the fact is that the policeman's job first is to protect lives and property, to uphold the law and not to run your errands, not to be seen carrying your bags, not to be seen, you know, serving you as it is. Mess, when I think about it, I'm like, how have we sunk so low? So we, we would have to move away quickly, but just before well, then, I'm coming very, no, very, no, very no, emotional about this. Before so. then, the point is, I mean, look at it. If you even have a police officer attached to you, why would you be engaging him? So let's even imagine there's a security threat. Let's even imagine there's a security threat around in that premise, the event you attended. Um, what would happen? Because he's holding the plate. At what point is he going to take his rifle? So you it know, doesn't even make that, sense. That, that's number one. Issues, if you look at the ratio of police to citizen, mm. we're expected to have, we according to the recommendation of the United Nations, mm. the UN, you're, you're looking at 220 or 22, if I'm correct, mm. to um, 100. Thousand citizens. That's a far cry here, now you? that's not what's going on. Currently, what we're experiencing is one. You have 100, uh, no, 600 personnel. So you have one police officer policing 600 citizens. I mean, if, even if you want to make an excuse for it, we should be looking at one police officer policing um, 180. So one is to eight, 180, that's the ratio. Mm. One is to 180. But rather, we're having one is to it's 600. And the United Nations is saying 220 is to, um, you know, to, I mean, is to 100. Okay. So it doesn't even add up at the end of the day. We don't have personnel, but the little that we do, we have subjected them, we have turned them to become every Aaron boys. Bones washing plates, shining shoes, carrying, carrying food, bags, carrying, carrying foods, I mean, carrying and then plates, we think that we can move Nigeria forward. Cars. This is a 
call you know to the inspector general please and it's not this is the first time like we're saying it's fortunate that we're an era where you know you have the smartphones acting very smart with smart people and that's what we're having all of this information so we're hoping that you know the national assembly uh, that's the ninth assembly they can do anything before they're out or we're also hoping that the presidency will see this there's no regard whatsoever and now how do we expect that we respect the police but we move away from that and we'll be looking at another issue on our top trending Yes, uh, let's look at um, uh, our education system. You know, it is no longer the use that um, you know the academic staff union of universities are. So, you know, has been on a one strike for some time now, and um, they have had meetings uh, with the federal government. Uh, but this time around, the last one, they had uh, nothing. You know, uh, savory seemed to have come out of it yesterday because it ended in a deadlock. But the issue of uh, you know ASU, you know, we have talked about ASU over time not just on the show even uh when we preach at in the office and every other thing it seems as if we are becoming like broken records because the issues are the same mercy you know it's just as though we know what the issues are we know the solutions yet we are not looking in those directions and um, at the end of the day is the, the same ball game they, 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 they also go on strike they'll meet with federal government uh, they will not agree today they'll meet again next week they're meeting students are uh, at home students are uh, you know taking up to what uh, are taking arms and uh, engaging in various sorts of advices in the country and at the end of it all who suffers is just the student all the suffer yes so i will reiterate uh, i have been part of you know the ASU strike i'd experienced it six months away from how many years did you say how many years did you say in school did you graduate after your four years i don't know i, did, I couldn't <laughs> i'm not even able to calculate because sometimes it's better not to even know what's going on because you probably even imagine. just you know yes. sink into depression and get very sad so you just you just leave on with the moment whatever happens mm. don't try to you know take into that but i know that there was a time where we stayed back home for you know six months and that's Whoa. a lot and you can't even tell because at this point now the one month as is going to go and strike a lot will happen so mm -hmm. many persons will lose their lives the people that wouldn't have died would die because they are going to be somewhere they are not supposed to, to be. be they're yeah. going to be engaging in things they're not supposed to engage in so that a yeah. lot would actually happen and that's on the one hand but the truth is let's be realistic we constantly have you know a number of persons moving away from Nigeria to other parts of the country to school once upon a time in my life I considered you know going to study I probably have my master's in, in Ukraine Accra. no which Ukraine. Accra what, what, what Accra are you talking about not in Ukraine because Ukraine, if you look at, of Ukraine. course if oh, you look wow. at Eastern will be thinking if you look at Eastern, you must no if you look at Eastern <laughs> Europe you find out that you yeah. know um, cost of schooling is very affordable i mean not necessarily but not compared to when you want to go to united kingdom amongst others and so um have you ever wondered why people have you ever wondered why we we actually have our children leave nigeria to go um school outside of nigeria because our standards and including not um, you know uh, politicians you have ministers governors and what have you sending their kids outside of this country to go school outside it's just simple i don't even want to go by the asu strike or not agreement i mean it's, it's very obvious that if the government was respecting the agreement they entered with asu we probably want to be talking about this how many years have we existed striking from 1999 up until now you, you you will be amazed that out of 23 we have done eight years uh, if this i mean if i'm really correct and that's it so on, on the other hand you also want to look at the fact that if you look at the classrooms practically i have gone to you know localities you want to talk about the education you want to look at the infrastructure in primary schools in universities it is appalling <laughs> The infrastructure is nothing to write home about. And Don't this is not me trying there. to run down the country. But this is, a, this is this is a reality. I have gone to communities where people actually sit on the floor. In the 21st century, in a country giant of Africa, as we, we constantly want to say, in primary schools, I'm just saying that students, are sit, people are sitting on the floor. There are no desks. Not to even talk about that the environment is conducive. Not to even measure up with you the even have technology that's going on. Yeah. So you probably have a feature, one feature running the entire, uh, you know. So there's a lot to go in. And if you check the universities, it's not conducive. Look at the, the condition of the lecturers. Recently, there was a video that popped up, I think in Anambra State or Imo State, where you had professors. You can't even imagine that these are professors who have studied. They have spent their time reading. You need to see. The, it looks like an uncompleted building. It is the no, it's, it's shameful. 
it is we are not it, supposed it is, to be talking about this, but it brings us back to because it's because, the budget. Because, so because you look the same at it. thing, we don't budget enough. You're going to go there, yes, do we don't budget enough. We don't, we don't set our priorities right. Mercy. You talk about that. You talk about Nigeria and wanting to go abroad. You, you, you remember the standard. We're supposed to even show the video yesterday. The, uh, the, the Nansa and the, the minister, you know, when the Nansa, you know, buddy even told him, uh, barefaced, that uh, your, he, we saw student, uh, pictures and videos of your, you know, your children abroad. You know, so the guy, imagine how he responded. That's to just show you the body language of um, those who are supposed to manage our education system. Really, really sad, and that's the reason why people constantly leave. I mean, let's even look at it. The president himself is not even in the country oh, for medical checkup. But why do we have to leave our own country to go seek medical help in another country? And um, what do they have that we can't have? We can make it happen. True. And that's what it is. If you go back to your schools, I mean, you find out that, the, no, let me even be very realistic, because these lecturers go through a lot. Yeah. I'm telling you, because as a student, very close to my lecturers, you walk into a hall, there's no light. I mean, there's no power supply, that would be the word. And the, the place is so hot, there's heat, no cross ventilation. And you expect them to walk in that kind of con environment. And you know, you expect them to perform very well. We need to, you, you know, we, we, we need to do better. Yes. Mm -hmm. at the end of the day and so without even having to talk about astro, astro strike or not oh. what is the state of our universities what is the state of our universities whether they are federal universities whether they are state, you know, state universities let us even look at government owned institution let's talk about the primary schools in the local government because usually you have um you have seen boarding houses that look like I don't even know what to classify them as. Abandoned building and projects. I saw a room where you have lecturers trying to struggle space. It makes nonsense of it. And you want to talk about the salary of a professor? They, end, they don't even end at 500,000. I don't know if it's going to be a plus now. That's what a professor ends in a university. And then you have lawmakers. When you want to begin to juxtapose that, it doesn't add up. The Nigerian not, government, and if we constantly is. profess that education is the bedrock of every nation, then it's important that the Nigerian government will pay attention. Because it's been said that wherever your hat is, that's where your money will go. True. So we constantly see the allocation, how we have allocated, you know, in the budget to the educational sector. It's not even enough. It can cater for anything. Mercy. We haven't really paid Mercy. attention. So it, we, we keep going in circles and yes, it's tiring. Yes, we are not setting our priorities right. You know, the UNESCO has come out several times to say that a particular percentage, about 26 or thereabouts, should, you know, should be, you know, budgeted for education every year. We keep on going in circles at the end of the day. The same old stories are being told. The uh, federal government will tell you that they have released 92 billion naira so far. It's not just about salaries, it's about infrastructure, it's about uh, making the um, environment conducive, not just for the lecturers themselves, but for our students. But I understand we have to move away from this um, topic. Uh, Russia, Ukraine is still trending everywhere. And uh, there's this story of um, 115 Nigerians um, you know, offering themselves to uh, take part in the war. They want to fight uh, for Ukraine. Mercy, Nigerians are volunteering to go to Ukraine to, you know, to help them. <laughs> I don't know. It, 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 it tells me about two things. It tells me that um, they are not really as patriotic because we have our own issues and that they feel that um, the country does not really care about them. So why not even go somewhere else when I, they feel that? Do you, they think that's the, do you think that's the issue? What is the issue, Mercy? I'm, I can't really say. I mean, it's, I'm just worried that uh, a group of persons, if there's anything to really, really go by, would volunteer. You, I mean, you were in a space. You were talking about a war themselves? zone. And you're talking about a place where you don't know where the next missile will come from. Mm. And recently we saw that in Kharkiv or thereabout, uh, you know, a missile that was released from Russia took down a particular university, if I'm not mistaken. So you, you have people who understand what's going on in a particular so way that they don't understand and want to go there. That's mission. I, so, we, I mean, it's confusing. To be very honest, I really don't understand the rationale behind the fact that you have Nigerians living in Niger who want to go to um, Ukraine to be part of, you know, uh, the force. If you want to even look at alliance and relations, it feels like, I mean, it looks like Nigeria might just have some kind of alliance. This is me just saying, um, you know, alliance with Russia because of, if you talk about um, patronizing 
patronage of you know we, military weapons and alignment at some point there was some kind of agreement that was signed that you know we'll probably be getting weapons from in 2021 uh, the russian military will probably you know be training the niger so there's a little bit of saying oh you guys probably might just have an alliance with russian then nigerians in nigeria in nigeria with all of the insecurity concerns that we're faced with uh, are, are volunteering and saying hey we're willing to go to ukraine and you know support what's going on there i can't explain the rationale <laughs> First, like would say in our local i don't parlance. even understand well, like i would say in our local parliament here let everyone just stay in their own lane you know let's uh, no but you <laughs> can't stop that because they put out they actually put up that um publicity and asking that people should come volunteer i mean they made that available so they're looking for people and people have volunteered the and the nigerian embassy has Nigeria submitted too. the list to them that's according to the reports available to us mm. Well, the last story we'll uh, be looking at, uh, a bit related to the Ukraine um, um, invasion, uh, Russia um, invasion on Ukraine, uh, but still also related to football. Uh, Ch uh, do you support Chelsea? Uh, no, I'm a Liverpool supporter, and it was really great to see that Liverpool actually, you know, did a great one. Not you know, with the penalty <laughs> <laughs> that happened, the Carabao Cup that happened. Okay. It was fantastic. It was very, uh, you know, but Chelsea has actually been fantastic. Uh, Chelsea has really been fantastic during the performance of, uh, I mean, during the era of, uh, well, what country? Uh, what's it called again? Tuchel, Thomas Tuchel. Yes, too cool. Um, you know, Chelsea has really done fantastic. Yeah. And so, you know, it's really, really great. But if you want to look at uh, Abramovich mm. selling Chelsea at the end of the day, you would want to agree with me that he's acting in the interest of Chelsea. Why do you uh, think it's in the interest of Chelsea? Because he put out a statement. Let's even see if okay. I'm able okay. to take that particular... No, he is. He's, he's actually acting in the interest. I'll probably not go through the entire thing, but mm -hmm. maybe a paraphrase or you know of what he actually said hoping i'm hoping that i'm able to get you know that right now and immediately scroll through that particular statement that was put out okay and so um okay so this is it i would just uh uh, paraphrase like I said in in, in current situation mm -hmm. I have therefore taken the decision to sell the club as I believe this is in the best interest of the club the fans the employees as well as the club sponsors and partners now this is how you think as a businessman because right now um, you know businesses that have been owned by Russia and I mean the sanctions have been put out just to weaken mm -hmm. Russia and make them have a rethink and turn away this sanction that's why you have all of these sanctions so, so countries are already acting and withdrawing and he's putting out the statement it's very obvious that he's acting in the interest of the club because what would happen is that the club would actually go down he doesn't want to see that that's all of that you have invested it's also an opportunity because he's been classified as those who are part of the oligarchy True. Uh, you know and so you know what the oligarchy a group of persons who are controlling you know the system and doing a lot it's very obvious that he has a strong uh, you know relationship with putin and so this would be what will win the hearts of the people that the fact that the net proceeds would actually go to ukraine mm. you know so in the long run is actually so so he's uh, acting yeah to be very honest he's acting to protect you know the interests of the club you can't actually build that kind of business or build oh, okay. a club like that and see it just go away this is a time to win back the heart of the people All right. uh, that's as much as we can take we wish um, chelsea and roman um, Abramovich uh, the best uh, in there, you know, whatever they decide to do eventually with the club. But we'll take a quick break and we will be going straight to the front pages of the newspapers in a moment and we'll call that off the press. Stay with us.